uh, on the 24th of February, Russia invaded Ukraine. The war has been going on since then, and it's already been uh, more than two weeks. Uh, we can already, already see the profound consequences it has for the European and global security. And today I will talk about the implications of this war uh, for Georgia, uh, a former Soviet Republic that is now aspiring for the EU and NATO membership, and that had uh, a five days war uh, with Russia back in 2008. I will talk to Gia Nodia, Professor of Politics and Director of the International School of Caucasus Studies in Ilya Chavchavadze State University in Tbilisi. Uh, he is also founder of the Caucasus Institute for Peace, Democracy and Development. Uh, Gia, thank you very much for, uh, for your time today. And uh, I will start uh, with this uh, very short uh, overall question. What, how do Georgians perceive the war? Um, what are the moods in the country? Okay, the Georgians perceive the war as our war. And uh, there were polls show that this is uh, the assessment which is supported, I don't remember exactly, but 87 or 90 percent of the population. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Russia invaded Georgia in 2008. Uh, and. Uh, this is uh, this invasion latest invasion is part of putin's general policy of punishing countries uh, that uh, uh, want to join uh, european union and nato and that generally see their future in uh, european family of nations uh, that's unacceptable for putin and uh, he uh, does what he does uh, as a result just strike tries to use uh, force against it um so you said the georgians perceive it as their war uh, however the georgian government uh, so far has distanced distanced itself from the events uh, they didn't join the international sanctions against russia and they cited as a reasoning they cited national interests uh, although tens of thousands of Georgians went, um, took to the streets to actually demand the harsher measures, and also the president of Georgia spoke against the war. Uh, so uh, how, how do you understand this situation? Why, why does the ruling uh, party distance itself? Yes, that's a paradox uh, of sorts, because Georgia society uh, was quite uh, unified uh, in uh, pro-Ukrainian, let's say so, feeling and support for Ukraine, but uh, government position was uh, different. Okay, they also expressed some level of uh, support for Ukraine, but it was uh, very lukewarm. And as you mentioned, they did not join sanctions, but also their uh, rhetoric was uh, not uh, uh, such that it, it did not suggest that they wholeheartedly supported uh, Ukrainian cause. Uh, Parliament adopted resolution in support of Ukraine without mentioning uh, Russian, uh, Russian invasion, that it was Russia who invaded Ukraine, and that's why we are supporting it. So uh, this created, uh, 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 you know, discontent uh, and uh, the demonstrations in support of Ukraine also partly developed into demonstrations protesting uh, government's uh, stance, government's attitudes. Uh, so government explains this by being cautious. It, uh, 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 it uh, accuses anybody who uh, criticizes its attitude as uh, a party of war it says uh, uh, it speaks it, uh, it it says of the opposition that they are party of war that the alternative to their policy would be joining the war uh, and they even uh, uh, accused president uh, salome zurabishvili who became president with their support that uh, she, uh, if she's criticizing them she she should say openly that she's uh, for joining the war. So they are demagogically, I think, uh, uh, playing that card. 
Okay, why is it happening? Okay, some people say that uh, they are under pressure of Russia or they had been Russia's project uh, from the very beginning. I mean, the Georgian Dream government. Uh, okay, I think uh, uh, they just uh, did not, uh, they miscalculated in, in somewhat similar way to Putin uh, that there would be no uh, strong resistance from Ukraine, there would be no strong support from the West, uh, that uh, uh, Ukraine would lose, uh, the West would not uh, be able to stop this from happening, and uh, uh, Georgia might uh, be had, had become the next target for Russian aggression. So uh, that's kind of calculation, I, I presume. Uh, how did they react to to the recognition by the so-called Luhansk People's Republic of Abkhazia? Uh, was there any statement on that? Uh, okay, there were there was formal protest, but uh, uh, it was not uh, too much noticed, so it was not taken too seriously. Uh, so, if you can see from from today's perspective, what security implications does the war in Ukraine? entail for Georgia? Uh, is there any specific, especially considering that the country is also on the Black Sea shores? Security uh, implications are quite direct. I think if we, uh, if Putin plans worked, I think, uh, as we see, it's not uh, working so far, but had it worked and Putin, uh, if Putin managed to basically change government in Ukraine and put somebody who would be obedient uh, and uh, mm, would uh, renounce Ukraine's bid to join NATO and European Union. Uh, okay, that would mean a stronger pressure on Georgia. Uh, not necessarily invasion, military invasion, uh, but strong pressure on Georgian government also to renounce Georgian pro-Western -pro course. And if government refused, uh, then it could be also invasion. So uh, uh, Georgia was uh, uh, obvious next target for Russian pressure. Uh, but if Russia loses in Ukraine, as we all hope it will, uh, then uh, uh, then uh, it's still possible that uh, Georgia is under pressure from Russia. It depends how Putin will lose. Uh, how, how much he will be weakened, uh, whether he will survive this uh, debacle at all. Uh, but uh, we cannot rule out that even if Putin fails in Ukraine, he will try to pressure Georgia. Although, of course, the uh, probability of it will be much lower. Uh, did the war affect somehow the relations between Georgia and uh, other Caucasus countries like Azerbaijan and Armenia? Especially I'm interested in Armenia since uh, uh, it's a CSTO member and also uh, in a defense alliance with Russia. Uh, okay, I know. I don't think that's not at all discussed. Uh, I think we all understand that basically Armenia is Russia's hostage, that Pashinyan is not... Uh, President of Armenia, Pashinyan, is not really a pro-Russian politician, but he is uh, basically in the corner. He's scared to death. And uh, while he shows uh, support to Russia in almost everything, uh, he sort of does it reluctantly. I think that's Georgian understanding. And uh, no, we don't see that uh, uh, Armenia is in any way kind of uh, Armenia's position is a threat to Georgia. I think objectively uh, speaking, Pashinyan and uh, Armenian government want Georgia to be strong and pro-Western because that gives them a little bit, uh, a chance of it, at, at least of having some room for maneuver. Uh, so, in the aftermath of the war, in the out after the outbreak of the war, uh, the EU um, recognized Ukraine's perspective to join the European Union. Uh, and it also recognized this perspective for Georgia and Moldova, and both of these countries applied formally uh, to become EU members on the 3rd of March. Uh, my question is, if it changes something for Georgia in the immediate future, um, 
what 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 is uh, what are the actions now? Okay, that's a uh, uh, very good question, and uh, uh, I don't think we have an answer at this point. Uh, 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 we are planning basically some discussions on this issue uh, because this announcement, this uh, application of Georgia, it came out of the blue. It was not in any way a logical result of internal Georgian political processes. It uh, came because of uh, this uh, changed international circumstances. Somehow Georgia and Moldova both followed the Ukraine's lead, basically, and took advantage of this opportunity created by EU's much greater openness to consider Ukrainian candidacy. Uh, so, and uh, it's not only was unexpected, but it was in a way contrary to the latest trends, because the latest trend is that uh, Georgia is uh, um, um, somehow distancing itself from Europe uh, in its internal policies, in the sense that it's uh, moving more autocratic that direction lately, and, uh, and also because the uh, rhetoric of Georgian government uh, is increasingly, has been at least increasingly dismissive of uh, recommendations and uh, advice coming from Europe and from the West in general. So, uh, in, a, in that sense, we are probably somewhat confused you know, what to make of it. Uh, uh, I mean, we understand why uh, Georgian Dream uh, government made that application, and uh, the fact itself of making application is welcome in Georgia. But uh, whether what it means, uh, what it will bring, uh, what it will bring also in terms of internal dynamics in Georgian politics, which is terribly polarized, and we live in some kind of uh, uh, political crisis that uh, became new normal basically for the Georgian politics. So uh, whether it will be some kind of turning point, which theoretically it should be, but um, but maybe not. So uh, uh, that's a very important question, but as I said, we cannot answer it yet. Um, the next question would be about the role of Turkey, and it's twofold. Uh, first of all, what do you, what do you see? Uh, how do you see the Turkey's role as a potential mediator? They already hosted one round of talks between the foreign ministers of Ukraine and uh, Russia. And uh, the other question is, um, what um, Turkey is a NATO member? It also supports Georgian application to NATO. Um, has there been any sort of ex enhanced cooperation lately in this sense? Uh, if there is, I am not aware of that, uh, uh, but we see Turkey playing some kind of double game in the region. Uh, on the one hand, it's of course member of NATO, it's quite supportive of Ukraine, and uh, it's this uh, Turkish drones, Bayraktar drones, which are uh, quite, uh, you know, uh, helpful, let's say so, to Ukrainian armed forces, uh, uh, but it also wants to distance itself from the West, uh, from NATO, and play this game of uh, mediator, rather, as uh, Israel also has similar game now. Uh, uh, and uh, that's uh, essentially, it's, no, it's nothing new. Uh, so Turkey, if, uh, Turkey trying to uh, somehow develop its own space uh, between Russia and the West, in a way, uh, and uh, following its own national interests the way President Erdogan sees that. And uh, uh, we are used to that anyway, uh, so uh, it was not surprising that Turkey took uh, this position also in this war. Uh, let me also ask you another question about potential Georgia's NATO membership. Uh, with, so Russia, one of Russia's demands towards Ukraine is uh, neutralization, so-called, or demilitarization of the country. 
uh, how with this situation, with these demands, like however maybe unrealistic they are and however m much Ukraine opposes them, um, does Georgia, does Georgian, Georgia's chances to um, join NATO increase or decrease or are they still, is Georgia still on, on this path? Uh, does the public opinion in this sense change, change in the country? No, I think public opinion stands where it has stood, uh, that majority, strong majority supports uh, NATO membership. At the same time, we understand that uh, this promise uh, uh, which we got of eventual NATO membership uh, is uh, kind of vague and general, and uh, uh, there is no guarantee that it will be fulfilled anytime soon, or I don't know, maybe ever. But uh, our course is the same, and uh, uh, of course, with uh, Ukrainian in, with invasion or Russia's invasion into Ukraine, uh, uh, situation is changing, uh, but we don't know in what way. Of course, the European Union uh, showed greater openness to Ukraine, but uh, we don't see similar kind of shift in NATO uh, attitude uh, towards Ukraine. Uh, so, in that sense, Ukraine is a leader. It's a country to watch also for Georgia. Uh, how, whether and how uh, you, uh, NATO attitude to Ukraine membership will change and uh, respectively uh, it can also uh, change with regards to georgia thank you very much for your time thank you thank you